and welcome. WWDC 2023 just happened. Wow. I need coffee. I can't cope with the amount of announcements that were made in this year's WWDC. Did you see it? Wow. So today I thought, well, you know, the aftermath of what we've just seen, so many announcements, so many products, amazing new product, expensive, but we'll get onto that a little bit later. But everybody's going to be talking about it. I was following people on Twitter and the world has gone crazy once again with Apple's latest announcement. So we're going to get into all that and let's just have a chat. But the big question of the day is, what's your thoughts on virtual reality headsets and in particular Vision Pro, which we'll be talking about shortly. Wow, that is an expensive product, but revolutionary. Hmm, maybe. Anyway, first off, bit of sip of coffee. All right, I would like to understand what you, what are your thoughts around WWDC? Did you watch it? Are there any announcements that you are just going crazy about? It would be great to hear from you in the comments or on the replay. But let's take a look, shall we, at what was announced. Um, I made some notes as I was going along and there's a lot. There is a lot to get through. So today, I thought we'd just skip over a few things and talk about what was announced. I got some notes on that and then let's get on to the, the big elephant in the room, which is the virtual reality headset. So uh, let's have a look. So, yep, nothing like groundbreaking with the, the MacBooks. Obviously, they've updated the MacBook Air that now has an M2 chip in it. And I have a Mac at the moment, a Mac Studio. I've had that for about a year now. That is the M1 chip in it. And that's been rock solid, reliable, never had any issues with regards to performance or anything like that. But the M2, the M2 chips, it's difficult to say, especially after coffee, the M2 chips are interesting. And with this MacBook Air, they're boasting 18 hours of battery life, so I heard, at a reasonable price, 1399 US dollars, which roughly translated will be the same in euros over here in Europe and everything else. Um, I don't know how they get 18 hours of battery life, but with an M2 chip, that is going to be a solid, solid Mac for you to take around with you, do some editing, you know, audio production, using Ecamm, whatever it might be. I think it's going to be a great, a great device to take around with you because it's very lightweight as well. It's only like 3.3 pounds, which is what, two kilograms, something like that, less than two kilograms. So that's going to be, it's going to be pretty cool. So yeah, that was okay. MacBook Air, 15 inch, interesting. I see that. Um, but let's move on to the Mac Studio. That got a big, big upgrade. Um, and the Mac Studio was was groundbreaking when it came out, for me anyway. I was waiting for the Mac Mini. Now, the little Mac Mini at the time um, was a little bit underpowered. I had an original one, which was the old PowerPC. So I've been around for a while with Macs. But the Mac Studio now has got a huge upgrade. It's got the, uh, the Mac Pro M2 Ultra chip. And for people who like live streaming, like myself and video editing, this apparently can do 24 simultaneous 4K streams, all processed in real time. So forget your little HD capture cards and your cam links and other things that you would be connecting to the system. This thing, this thing is crazy time. So yeah, Mac Studio at a crazy price. Let me know, um, those of you who are watching live, are there any of the products that you've seen today in WWDC that you'd be interested in buying? Are we all going to sell parts of our body now to afford the virtual reality headset that is coming out. We shall soon see. Let me just get some comments windows up here. All right. So Mac Studio. So this thing, 24 simultaneous 4K streams um, at a price. I'm going to price one up in a minute just for giggles. But the big news that everybody's been waiting for is the upgrade to the Mac Pro. Now, this powerhouse system is going to allow you to have many many PCIe cards in there. It's going to be a huge, huge, huge machine for doing video and audio processing. And I'm going to be interested to see how much, if we maxed it out, it would cost. This thing is 8K streaming capability, multi-recording, Mac Ultra M2 chip in it. I mean, up to 192 gig of RAM. This thing is crazy. So let's, let's, for giggles, let's try and order one. I hope this isn't linked to my account because, you know, I don't want to order 
a machine that's like a hundred thousand. So let's go for Mac Pro, shall we? There's a desktop version and a rack mount version. If you're interested, let's get into the Mac Pro and let's just price it up. So let's go for the Apple M2 Ultra. Of course, that's an extra thousand on top of it already. Uh, so it's 24 core, 32 neural engine. What's the difference? Okay, how much memory do we want? Well, let's let's go crazy. We want 192 gig if we're going to build one of these things out, right, kids? And then storage-wise, well, it's SSD storage. You can get additional storage, but let's go for eight terabytes. Don't really care about the stainless steel frame, but let's have one anyway because we love it. I uh, don't need a mouse, trackpad. Do, 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 do. Anything else? I thought it'd be more than that. That's 12 grand. Okay, so 12 grand for a Mac Pro. You can have yours delivered today. We're not going to have that purchased and picked up, of course, but that's all right. So let's have a look. Okay. Yes, 12 grand. Nope, won't be getting one of those. So let's go back here uh, with the web. Okay, so that's the Mac Pro. Anybody interested in buying a Mac Pro? I think for hardcore video editors, audio scientists, people that want the maximum amount of power, obviously that's the way to go. But yeah, not for me. So what else did I have here? So iOS. iOS 17 has got a slew of updates. Um, for me, the standout features were posters, visual voicemail in real time, um, FaceTime voicemail, which is cool, uh, messages updates, so a lot of messaging updates that you're going to get now with that and then the audio messaging transcription so you can basically when you see a voicemail coming in it will transcribe that for you in real time so you can see if you want to pick up the call or let it go to voicemail entirely up to you um, stickers so you can create um, stickers now from video that you've taken remove the background you can put stickers into your messages all kinds of crazy stuff in there so there's a lot of cool features in ios 17 they really are pushing the upgrades as they do every year to make it more feature packed. One interesting point though, is that they're bringing these widgets and everything to the iPad. I actually thought widgets were available on the iPad and all the other iOS uh, systems that you could use, but yeah, maybe not. So anyway, iOS 17, um, Mac OS is called uh, Samoa and that's gonna bring a ton of new features. AirDrop, intelligent keyboard, auto correct, journaling app, um, lots of other great features in this. Let's have a look what's in the preview. Now, I think for people who are on the beta version, you can just download this right now and you can download and get all these features. I've typically stayed away from developer versions because obviously there's lots of software bugs and things like that in it, but why not? Why not try it and get all these wonderful features right now? I think all this stuff is only going to be available in the fall i think um i didn't stay around long enough to see the end of the wwdc conference so i wasn't sure whether it was going to be around or not but wow some major updates coming up now for watch os um the tracking and the use case using it with your bike if you have an e-bike for example you can connect it to bluetooth and it's going to give you all um, the statistics from when you're out and about. So all the metrics is going to collect with regards to your fitness and your activity is now going to be on that. And watch OS 10. I'm hoping it's going to be compatible with my old Apple Watch that I've got, but we shall definitely have to have a see. The thing I'm most excited about, though, is this one here is the little Snoopy Peanuts um, new visualizations that you get with the, the watch interested in that. But anyway, let's 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 push all that to the side and let's talk about this virtual reality headset called Vision Pro that was announced today. Now, there was a lot of rumors going around that Apple was going to release a virtual reality headset. We know that Facebook have tried and failed with their VR headset back in the day. And I remember, well, if you remember, Google Glasses and other wearables that were around many years ago have also sort of failed to be adopted by the public. So what do we think is going to make a difference here with this particular version of virtual reality headset from Apple? Well, clearly, from the blurb, if you could believe everything that they're showing on their demos, which are typically Apple and pristine, of course, whether 
it will always live up to the hype. For me, from what I've been looking at, it just looks truly amazing. If it's going to deliver even half of what it promises with regards to the immersive experience for film, for video, for music, for FaceTime, for collaboration, working in Zoom and Teams and seeing all your apps. It's like Minority Report on steroids. It's just truly amazing. So will it live up to everything that it's promised to deliver? I mean, I, I just cannot get over the amount of technology in this device. I, I hope that you get a chance to, if you didn't see today, the WWDC conference video about how they actually made this and the technology into it. Now, I wear glasses, so they've also accounted for having additional lenses that you can put in this headset. So it'll correct, you know, or have your vision corrected for you so you get the full immersive experience. But my goodness, what an amazing piece of technology. I particularly like the idea that you can um, see people when they come into your vision. So the, the glasses, it's almost like the react to light, repeat sunglasses back in the day where, you know, you're moving from dark to light and the, the vision just sort of dissipates a little bit so you can see people coming into your view. But what I want to know is the, the price was 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 quite shocking to me. I mean, 30, I think, what was it? 39, $34.99, $3,499 US dollars. And it's only going to be available if you look at the website here, available early next year in the US. So... Hmm, what, what does that mean for the rest of us in Europe and the rest of the world? I guess it's going to be initially launched in the US. Maybe data privacy and things like that they have to sort out. But let's see if we can watch the film. Uh, see if this plays. And the video could not be played. Thank you very much, Apple. Why is that? Maybe because it's maybe because I'm trying to play in this browser, but we can get, get that sorted in a second. In fact, let me just bring up a browser real quick and let's play. Let's play the, the video. Actually, we'll do that a little bit later because it's going to take me time to set that up and I don't want to waste valuable time by trying to set stuff up. What else information do we have on this right now? Um, bah, 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 bah. Let's go through this a bit more. So I found this quite interesting as well. So you can use hand gestures and very subtle movements and motion. It's going to move the applications and where you see things with your eyes. It even suggested that you could use something like Adobe Lightroom and do basic editing workflows using just your eyes and, and sort of subtle hand gestures. That, to me, is, is quite amazing. And I think where this is going to succeed, where Facebook failed, is that it's just offering so much integration with watching live games. For example, they've, they're in bed with Disney, so Disney's going to be producing... 3D virtual experiences for the movies. And let's not forget the volume of games that are going to be come out for this device. So using controllers with this device, having the unnecessary need now to have a Apple TV or any large screen TV, this is just going to be your go-to resource. Does this mean that people are just going to, well, not leave their home anymore because they can get everything that they want from from this particular device. So let's look at the enclosure. I mean, it's it looks like some ski goggles, let's be honest. I mean, it's uh, it's pretty cool, but it does look like a pair of ski goggles. I don't know how comfortable it's going to be long term wearing this. Um, and let's talk about the battery and how it connects in a second as well. So that's interesting. Um, in terms of cameras and sensors, I mean, it has a ton of cameras on here and many sensors um, attached to it. Speakers built into the audio um, headset. The headband is fully adjustable, of course, and everything else. Um, the digital crown, so obviously that's taken from the phone. So all the sort of ways that you can manipulate and use this device is just, well, it's incredible. And I think for me, the, the not design flaw, but the thing I didn't like is the fact that you'll need some form of external battery connected via a sort of, uh, connector that you would typically see with the watch and that's going to sit in your pocket and well I guess they can't have a huge battery in the back of this thing because obviously it wouldn't be uh, it wouldn't be great um, and you'd have to carry that around with you but anyway mm, let's see but only available in the US only available next year anything like this is going to be made or broken by the software and the uptick in people 
buying it. So I think only time will tell. Obviously, this is version one. It's typically a beta version, right? So they're going to be working on uh, finalizing the software and all the respective hardware issues that they might come up against whilst trying this out. But I'm wondering who out there has already got uh, a pair uh, or a, at least a headset to play with. And uh, it'd be interesting to see what's happening. Well, that was really it. I mean, I just wanted to quickly talk about everything that's been going on with uh, the WWDC today. And in particular, the amazing amount of updates and new hardware that's available. So again, the question of the day is, will you be looking at buying a virtual reality headset, the Vision Pro? It's expensive. Let's not deny that. So let me know in the comments. If you watch on the replay, I'd be interested to know if you're going to be buying this or not. What were your takes from WWDC? What did you like? What didn't you like? For me, I was actually missing a big update. I thought with the release of the Final Cut Pro for iPad and Logic Pro for the iPad, they would at least have had some major updates to Final Cut Pro for the Mac. It's been a long time since we've seen any major updates. Everything has been incremental over the years. And for me, I'd, it would have been would have been much better to see a great new update to Final Cut Pro, simply because they haven't really done much in the last year. DaVinci Resolve and now Premiere Pro are catching up with having automatic transcription in your video. So taking the likes of what Descript does typically by uploading a video, automatically transcribing and doing some edits using text-based workflows, I would have thought that Apple would have gotten the bandwagon and implemented some form of machine learning or AI associated with doing that. So only time will tell. I'm hoping later in the year that we'll see a big update to Final Cut Pro. I'm a big Final Cut Pro user. I've tried DaVinci. You'll have seen me try and fail in some of my videos, but let's see whether we're going to get any new updates for Final Cut Pro. I hope so, or else I may have to resort to using Descript or DaVinci Resolve for some of the workflows I'm working on. Anyway, once again, thank you for watching. Hook me up in the comments below. Let me know what your thoughts are on WWDC. It's a quick overview. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk again soon. See you in the next video.